Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the built-in statistical testing tools in our TI calculators to help us perform a hypothesis test, in this case, specifically for a mean where our population standard deviation, or sigma, is known. So when we have our rejection region model, we know that a right-tailed test gives us an upper right rejection region, a left-tailed test gives us a lower rejection region, and a two-tailed test we have rejection regions both in the left and the right tail. So this technology uses a little bit of a different uh, approach. Instead of calculating a rejection region, what it does is it calculates the probability or what we're going to call the p-value of having a sample with a mean of x bar given that mu is equal to the value in your null hypothesis. So if you truly are working with a if you are truly working with a population that does have the mean value that you've said in the null hypothesis, what is the probability of getting a sample with that x bar mean? So that's the probability that is being calculated here. So we'll then once we have that p-value, that probability value, we're going to compare that to our level of significance. If our probability is greater than or equal to our level of significance, so if it is more likely than our level of significance, then that's pretty normal and we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. If we have a very small probability of getting an x-bar of that value, so if the p-value is less than alpha, that would be very unusual, and so we can reject the null hypothesis. A little rhyme to help you remember that is that if your p-value is low, h0, or your null hypothesis, must go. So that would mean if your p-value is less than alpha, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. If your p-value is high, then h0 will fly. So if your p-value is greater than your alpha, then your null hypothesis is fine. You don't need to reject it. Okay, so how do we get this p-value that we're talking about? Well, this is going to be under your stat menu in your calculator, and you're gonna go over to the tests. If you watched our videos on confidence intervals, it's in the same menu where we found our z-interval and t-interval and all of that. When we're working with mean and standard deviation known, we are working with Z scores, so we're going to be working with a Z test. So that first thing that's right there in the menu. When you open it up, toggle over to statistics, and then it's going to ask you for a couple of things. It's asking you for mu sub zero. That's the value that you put in your null hypothesis. What are you comparing it to? It's asking for your standard deviation for your population your sample mean, how many were in your sample, and then it needs to know what your alternative hypothesis looks like. So is it a not equal to, is it less than, or is it greater than? Once you've put all that information in, when you hit calculate, it will give you a p-value. Then we can compare that to our level of significance and make a conclusion. So let's see some examples of this. So let's say we have the Nero Match Company sells matchboxes that are supposed to have an average of 40 matches per box, where the population standard deviation is 9. So let's say a random sample of 94 matchboxes shows that the average number of matches per box is 43.1. Using a 1% level of significance, can you say that the average number of matches per box is more than 40? So I'm still going to need to write null and alternative hypotheses. So my null hypothesis would be that mu is equal to 40, and my alternative, more than 40, would be greater than 40. So I'll go into my stat menu, go into a z-test, and then I'm going to feed in my stats. 
So my mu sub zero is whatever value that I have here in my null hypothesis, which is 40. My sigma is given here in the problem as nine. X bar is your sample mean, in this case, 43.1. And your N is how many in your sample, in this case, 94. Looking at my alternative hypothesis, I have a greater than symbol, so I wanna to toggle over to my greater than symbol here. And then when I hit calculate, this screen pops up on my calculator. So notice it actually calculates your test statistic or your Z star, okay? We calculated those by hand in previous videos, so there it is. And then it gives you a P value. Notice here it says 4.196 and then it has this E negative four. That means we have zero, or we have point and then we have three zeros. 4, 1, 9, 6, and so on. So that's our p-value, and we want to compare that to our level of significance. So our level of significance, or 1%, is 0 0.01. So we kind of want to fill in the box here with greater than or less than. So here, our p-value is less than our level of significance, our alpha value of 0 0.01. So when our p-value is low, our p-value is smaller than our alpha, that means it's very unlikely to get an average of 43.1 if the true average is 40. So that means we would reject this null hypothesis. So here we could say there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the true mean number of matches is equal to 40. Okay, so when we compare our p-value here, we can do the same thing as what we did with the rejection regions, but doing it with technology. Let's do that one more time. So let's see them say that a machine in the student lounge dispenses coffee. The average cup of coffee is supposed to contain seven ounces. Eight cups of coffee from the machine show the average content to be about 7.3 ounces, with a standard deviation of 0.5 ounces. Do you think that the machine has slipped out of adjustment and that the average amount of coffee per cup is different than seven ounces? Use a 10% level of significance. So again, before we can perform any hypothesis test, we have to have an alternative and null hypothesis. So our mu is equal to seven ounces would be our null hypothesis. And here we're saying, are we different than seven? So that would be a not equal to alternative hypothesis. So again, if we're using technology here, going into our stat menu, going over to tests and selecting option one for Z test, make sure that you're on the stats menu there. And then enter in your information. Mu sub zero is whatever you have in your null hypothesis, in this case, seven. Your sigma is your population standard deviation here, given as 0.5. X bar is the mean of your sample. So in this case, that would be 7.3. N is the number in your sample. So we sampled eight cups of coffee. And then here we need to tell it what kind of test. So look at your alternative hypothesis. We have a not equal, so we're going to select that option and go down to calculate and hit enter. So here it's going to, again, give you your test statistic or your Z star. So if we were doing the rejection region method, that would be what we get. And then it's going to give us a P value. So here, our p-value is 0 0.0897, if I was rounding. And we want to compare that to our alpha value. Our alpha value is 10% or 0 0.1. So in this case, our alpha value is larger than our p-value. So our p-value is low, 
So that would mean that we would reject our null hypothesis here. So if the p-value is smaller than alpha, then that means it would be very unusual to have a sample with a mean of 7.3 if the true mean was 7. So we would make the decision here to reject our null hypothesis and say there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the true average ounces dispensed by the machine is 7. All right, guys, that does it for this video on using technology or p-values to help us do hypothesis testing with a known standard deviation. Until next time, we'll catch you in a future video.